Hello, if you haven't learned by now, my name is Lawrence Brown and I'm a tall man, six foot one at least, and I'm British, obviously, uh, and I am the youngest of three brothers. I live in the United States and have done now for more than a decade. It's a funny thing, you know, being the youngest. You find yourself forever the overcompensator, valiantly trying to emerge from the perceived shadow of your elders. And so in that respect, it was one of my life's defining moments that I should be the first in my family to move to the United States of America. I had taken this bold leap into the not-so-new world and expanding my horizons in a country that uh, the Browns, anyway, had uh, known only during a fortnight visit to Florida in 1990. This was me stepping out of the shadows, you know, saying uh, farewell to the uh, homestead of my youth and bonjour to the landscape of my future. Um, I had, I think, at last made it. Except the uh, the intervening years, moving thick and fast as they did, uh, play tricks, I think, on my memory because I'd forgotten that before me... Others came. So it was in Grimsby, England, about 20 years ago, and I was a teenager, you know, when my brother first unfurled this really long piece of paper ahead of an epic undertaking. Now, it was only fitting that material extracted from trees should be used for this undertaking, because this undertaking was itself to become a tree, that of the family variety, a family tree. As a young man, of course, I gave only a sort of cursory glance, I think, to the uh, generations of names that my brother had managed to track down, but that all changed the moment uh, that one name in particular, one surname that is, emerged from a, a sort of outer branch of the tree, and that name was Enderby. Now this, as chance would have it, was the uh, surname of my best friend Rob, who by an even greater uh, twist of fate uh, had a dad whose, whose interest in his own family tree had taken off, and cross-examinations of both trees revealed two extraordinary details. Firstly, uh, owing to the marriage of a William Enderby and a Sarah Brown on my side, it turns out that I am distantly related to my best friend. So that was firstly, I mean, that was amazing all by itself. And then certain descendants of that couple uh, gave up their lives in Bimbrook, which is a village uh, near Grimsby, uh, for a place 5,000 miles away. And that place was Utah. And so that's it. You see, these not-so-small details came flooding back to me last summer when I was booked on a business trip to Idaho Falls, which is about 200 miles north of Salt Lake City. As soon as my work was done, I took a weekend flight into uh, Utah's capital, and I wanted to investigate uh, the Enderby migration of the past and connect it, if possible, to the present. So for the uninitiated, Salt Lake City is, of course, famously home uh, to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, otherwise known as the Mormon Church. And there's something you should know about the Mormons. They just happen to maintain one of the world's largest repository of family history records. And so because of that, it would be the Family History Library, right next to the Temple Square, uh, that I would lay bare everything I knew so far, which in a nutshell was this. William Enderby and Sarah Brown bred like rabbits. Among their 14 children was another William, born in Bimbrook in 1778. Eight. He would marry a woman by the name of Mary Draper, who only went and popped out ten kids of her own, including another William, also born in Bimbrook, and himself a fellow who would marry down the road. His bride would bear the name Eliza, but she was lazy and only had two kids. Pathetic. Thankfully, her youngest, also Eliza, born in 1832, is where our story truly begins. In the mid-19th century, shortly after the founding of the Mormon Church, the Mormons sought to convert people from not just the United States, but from Europe. In all, it's believed that around 100 thousand newly converted British Mormons set sail across the Atlantic and settled in Utah. Chiefly because of this, the state today lays claim to a rather surprising fact. It boasts the highest percentage of English ancestry among all 50 United States. Higher than Maine, higher than Vermont, higher even than New Hampshire. Uh, one of those ancestors was Eliza Jane Enderby, my second cousin, four times removed. Now, it's, it's not entirely clear when, but sometime in the timeline, Eliza married a fellow by by the name of uh, yet another William, uh, he of the Branson family, and after that things get a little hazy, so no records really exist of Eliza's journey across the Atlantic, and there was there was little indication as to whether uh, this occurred before or after her marriage. Uh, but uh, what we do know, there are two milestones that vouch for her life 
in Utah. So firstly, the birth of her daughter in 1871 and her death, her own death, in the city of Ogden in 1925. Now at the Family History Library, I was able to uncover some useful information, particularly about the former. Like Eliza and Eliza before her, Eliza's daughter's name was, actually it was Gertrude, uh, just kidding, it was Eliza! And by 1903 she was living in the aforementioned Ogden, the place where her mother had died and presumably lived. We know this because a 1903 immigration report shows that Eliza the youngest, by then uh, 32 years old, re-entered the United States at Ellis Island, and this was on October 31st of that very year. She was with her husband, John Brereton, and a five-year-old son by the name of Frederick, and it appears by all accounts that they were returning home after a visit to the motherland. At some point in the next 17 years, however, as evidenced by this census report from 1920, the Brereton's, with daughter Lois added to the lineup by now, um, moved 40 miles south to Utah's capital, Salt Lake City, and Eliza the youngest, by all accounts available, would spend the rest of her life in the city. See, she died in 1966, age 94, and was buried at Mount Olivet Cemetery. Unfortunately, this is where my findings end. Her husband had long since died in 1938, and scant records surfaced of their children, Frederick and Lois. Uh, born before 1920, neither is likely to be around today. But rather than give up hope, I aim to keep this file open. After all, perhaps Frederick or Lois Brereton uh, became somebody's parent or grandparent, somebody's other half. Perhaps long ago their stories were passed down from friend to friend and are waiting to be told again. There are 200,000 people in Salt Lake City. Somebody knows something. Perhaps you do. And so what I'm asking today is that you share this story, you share this video, particularly the, those of you who live in Salt Lake City or live in Utah in general. Let's see how far we can get this to try to find out uh, who those other descendants, if indeed there were other descendants, um, of Eliza or Lois uh, or uh, Frederick, to see if I can connect here in the present day uh, with people that came from that same Sarah Brown and, and William Enderby relationship back in the day. And if you're watching this and you do recognize some of the names that have emerged during this video um, and you're you're related perhaps to those people or you're just friends with them or you worked with them, um, let me know uh, by going to lostinthepond.com. You can find our contact page on there. Get in touch. Let me know. In the meantime, spread this video like wildfire. I, I ran into some wildfires in Utah, so that is appropriate. And, uh, and we'll see where we can go. And I'll keep you updated as to where I am and who these people are if I find out. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you once again for watching this episode of Finding America. If you have information about uh, any of the names that you heard in this video, like I said, you can get in touch at lostinthepond.com by using our contact feature. Uh, you can also get in touch uh, at our Twitter page as well as Facebook and Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at, at lawrence.m.brown. Um, and if you haven't had the chance yet and you would like to support the work we do on this channel, the best place to do that is going to be at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. And if you do that, you're name will flash up just like these fine folks to the right um, in future videos so they're just one of the many perks that you will get from doing so but you can read more about that at patreon.com slash lost in the pond and if you are interested in following my travels around the United States I highly recommend watching this video from when I went to San Francisco last year and if you haven't yet had the pleasure hit my stupid little face here down to the left and you can subscribe to lost in the pond by doing so and don't forget to click my little bell Thanks.